just wanted to take a moment and share this interesting dream that I had last night about like the times we live in. It just seems like there's so much going on and you have to wonder, are we living in biblical times? Are we living in like a possible Ezekiel 38, Magog and Gog war coming on the scene? And we have questions about the rapture of when that's gonna take place. I've been asking all these questions, I'm really seeking. When I came to Finland, I really went deep into Matthew 24. I mean, I, I first came here, I've read it before, but then the whole time I've been here, it's just been impressed upon me as if I'm supposed to like look into it quite a bit deeper. And then I began to look in, and see how it, it means stuff for the original readers, you know, and listeners in 70 AD, but also the prophetic is like an onion and there's just so much involved. And we would be crazy to say that it has no meaning for, for believers today. In, in fact, it seems like this is is for us. I do believe it's we need to be sharpening each other in these times. And if someone has a word, if someone has a prophetic word, they got to share. And then the Bible talks about, you know, like other people speaking prophetic words and then others interpreting those and we sharpen each other to understand if that makes sense, if that's from the Lord or not. For me, I've I felt a little alone it's the same with my wife and us in in, you know, in here in Finland. We we don't, we have a church we go to and you know, church here is quite orthodox or Lutheran or, or or the one we go to is evangelical and, and you know as we know Paul's coming up in the Bible against a lot of like a Judaizer message and I sense that all over the institutional churches there's a little bit of a works based mentality which scares me because I believe that's like the whole opposite of the gospel that it's through faith alone in the works the finished work of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, and what that means literally and what that symbolizes is that He took our sins and we are not able to atone for ourselves. So all religion, it just kind of proves how much we don't have faith. So last night I go to bed and I just, I kind of open my heart up and I just say, God, you know, I've been a little distant, I've been a little distracted lately. We had a baby, a second baby, we bought a home just been buying stuff online and just thinking I don't want to be distracted anymore and I really want to press in and I'm just not sure what it is that you're speaking father I have all these different scriptures in my heart but I don't know what to think so I go to bed open my heart and in my sleep I'm reminded of the exodus of Israel that that came out of Egypt after 400 and however many years Moses he, he brought the people out and the point of the dream was more this feeling that people had as they were marching towards the Red Sea and as they were going towards the Red Sea they were worried they were looking up behind them and they could sense the armies coming and intimidating them and it was very scary and yet there was a sense that people needed to just hang on and have faith believing standing on what God had spoken that that he was going to bring them out of this land of Egypt and sure enough it seemed like at the last second right before the armies came the Red Sea just opened up and boom there was an escape and they could get away what is the most interesting part of all this is that I had a second dream and last night I've never had anything quite so like specific like and so encoded. I woke up with this sense that there was a, a code that would get you through this intense time. And the code was 4100, 4100. I woke up and I, and I, you know, I wanted to quickly look into this because I knew I'd probably forget, but at the same time it was like, it was like ringing inside of me, 4100. I had no idea what this meant. I looked it up biblically. If there was anything in the Bible that represented 4100, there's nothing that popped up. And then I remembered that to look into the Strong's concordance, as we know there's numbers for the Greek words. And there is a word uh, for 4100, and it means pistuio. And it says that the word pistuio is a verb that means to believe, to have faith in, to trust, or to be persuaded. The usage in the Bible, it appears frequently in the New Testament and is often translated as believe or have faith. For example, in John 3.16, whoever believes in him shall not perish. The word believes is translated to pestuio. This term is foundational in Christian theology, especially concerning the concept of faith, trust in God and salvation. Hmm, salvation. And I'm just going to give a few scriptures for this pestuio. G4100. We got John 1 12. But as many as received him, to them 
he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 6, 29, Jesus answered them and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye shall believe on him whom he has sent. John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live, and whoever shall live and believeth in me shall never die. Acts 16, 31, And they said, Believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. I thought that was very interesting for questions about, you know, what about my family, you know? That is an encouraging word that even when you believe, you know, as a man and the leader of your home, that belief goes also upon your house. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and thy shall believe in thy heart, that God has raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. The Old Testament is written in Hebrew, so there is no Greek concordance, but there is a Septuagint that is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. And in the story of, you know, God's people fleeing Egypt, the Septuagint has this pastuio, it says in Exodus 14:31, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people believed. But the word believe, the number 4,100 there, found in the Greek Septuagint, which is the translation of the Old Testament, it's talking about that when they saw how God provided and parted the Red Sea, that literally skyrocketed their faith. With these things that are happening on in the world, I've sensed for a while now that some big changes are going to happen. If there was one thing we should do and could do, I feel like this is the instruction, is that focus on your faith. The faith in the Bible is, is equated to gold refined by fire. This is the thing that will keep us strong, like in the book of Matthew, it talks about our, our lives are built upon the rock, that when the storms come, that it, that our house is not blown over, as opposed to building it on the sand where it will be blown over. And so what do we do to build on the rock? We It's through the faith in what Christ has accomplished and who He is and what He's promised and that He will come back, He will protect us. And I do believe the key here is faith. And that is what I would like to share and leave with today to just believe and I trust that God is going to continue to give people dreams and visions and it'll help guide us through whatever tough times come our way. So let's put our trust and hope and faith in Him. God bless you.